Friends, I am Dr. Amdekar and you must have heard in the last three episodes related to cough presented by my colleagues. And in this video, I am going to offer you a very simplified approach to analysis of cough clinically. Friends, the first step when anyone presents with a cough, you must be sure whether it's a primary respiratory problem or it could be secondary to a cardiac or a neurological or even an upper GI problem. And of course, even a habit cough can come right from the psychogenic etiology itself. Once you are sure that a primary or a secondary involvement of a respiratory tract is clear, the next step is to find out whether the cough is a major significant symptom and if it is so then you are sure it's a primary airways disease and if it's a dry cough then it's an upper airway disease and if it's a wet cough then it's a lower large airway disease. But please take a note that as the airways get smaller in diameter as they keep on branching further the cough intensity also goes down gradually to an extent that in a bronchiolitis there may not be cough at all or a very mild cough but breathlessness may be a major symptom and thus a significant or a major severe cough is a large airway problem. And when you decide it's a large airway you further go down to say if it's a milder cough then it's the lower most distal airways or it could be a lung parenchyma often associated with fever or breathlessness or it could be a pleura with a chest pain or it could be even an interstitial lung disease again coming with acute or chronic breathlessness. Thus the severity of cough is an important issue to first decide the part of the respiratory tract that is involved. Once you know that it is really the larger airway involved, then the cough is a very common recurrent symptom in the community at large and therefore your next question is, has there been a similar cough in the past? And if the answer is yes, then your next question is, has there been a personal or a family history of atopy which makes it a recurrent allergic cough like an asthma? On the other hand, if there has been a cough associated with other symptoms, then it gives you a clue to the pathology as well as the possible etiology. Having said this, origin, duration, progress of each symptom analysis is an important uh, issue to not forget. And if the cough appears suddenly from nowhere, you consider a mechanical cause like an inhaled foreign body or a sudden aspiration in which there is also sudden choking. On the other hand, if the onset of cough has been over few hours, it could be typically an allergic or a topic condition like an asthma. But if the cough has been uh, developing over next two, three days along with fever or maybe even breathlessness, then you know that it could be a pneumonia as well. And finally, if the cough has been going on for a long time, maybe few weeks or even more, it could be also some interstitial lung disease. Having said this about the origin and the duration, the progress is equally important. And if the cough has been worsening over few days or few weeks, it could be a pertussis or a pertussoid disorders caused by even a viral infection or many other causes, or it could be simply a large mediastinal mass compressing on the airway and as it gradually increases in size, the cough goes on worsening. That's how the progress is also important. But when a large airways are involved, like any tubular structure, you need to consider whether the pathology is coming from within the tube, as happens in the airways, by a thick mucus or any ciliary dysfunction like a ciliary dyskinesia or of course a foreign body itself or whether it is coming from the muscle of the tube like 
it happens in a bronchospastic cough in typically an asthma or many other infections as well or the cough is arising from a compression from outside over the airways as happens in a large mediastinal lymph node mass which has been gradually increasing and compressing on the airways causing a progressive cough thus origin duration progress gives you a probability of where is the exact micro anatomy of the cough and then of course we start analyzing whether the pathology or an etiology and that is possible along with many other accompanying symptoms like fever breathlessness or many other symptoms but friends the cough is a very common recurrent symptom in the community at large almost in all age groups and therefore it was very right and ably discussed by dr mahesh moite about a recurrent or persistent cough the first and the foremost is you make a clear difference between a recurrent disease causing recurrent cough or it is a persistent disease causing recurrent cough friends like tuberculosis for example the disease is continuous persistent but the cough may be recurrent and this is clearly evident by a deteriorating health status in spite of a recurrent cough that in between episodes of cough the child's health is gradually deteriorating which suggests it's a persistent disease with a recurrent cough on the other hand a typical asthmatic cough could be also recurrent with or without breathlessness or wheezing but in between episodes the patient is almost normal without any deteriorating health and that is typically an asthma however what looks like an asthma with a recurrent cough or wheeze but also the patient has a deteriorating health status you start thinking what could be mimicking asthma and one of such diseases is the cystic fibrosis and hence we should be able to differentiate between a recurrent cough of a recurrent disease like a typical viral infections in young age or a recurrent cough with a normal health status in an asthma as against a recurrent cough due to a persistent disease as happens in tuberculosis or many other complicated disorders having said this about the recurrent or a persistent cough friends it is important that if the cough persists for more than 3 or 4 weeks then one must start investigating such a patient and this is because majority of the times the cough lasts for only 2 to 3 or 4 weeks and gets better but if it persists beyond that then many times you need a referral to a specialist and dr moite made a very strong statement that cbc and chest x ray are often not useful but if the cough persists over a long time you need far more investigations though in every patient with a cough a cbc or a chest x ray may be justified as a baseline test so as to compare subsequently if the tests are need to be repeated friends <clears throat> we are coming to the end of our small series on cough and now we move on to the gastrointestinal system and our next video will be by dr tushar manier and he will talk on vomiting look beyond gi friends i hope you are enjoying our steer videos if you have any suggestions please send them to us we will certainly give a thought to improve ourselves and i hope you continue to be with us and encourage us thank you very much